I'm doing the interview asking people questions but this time around like I don't know how it starts <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Mazin and I'm the editor of Readme. So, kicking things off, I'd like to tell you a bit about who we are and what we do. So, Readme is, we'd like to call ourselves Sri Lanka's premier tech news site. So, we started off about six years ago because we saw that in Sri Lanka, a lot of people are doing cool stuff in tech, but nobody knew about them. And even when mainstream news organizations tried talking about this stuff, they just got it horribly wrong. They still keep getting it wrong, my bad. It's like they still keep getting it wrong. We decided to start off this platform called Readme to tell people, hey, this is what Sri Lanka is doing in tech and they're doing good stuff. They're doing good th good things. So we started off about six years ago in a very tiny office inside KFC in the It was just one room. We never really used it actually, like come think of it. Like we were just working out in coffee shops at our homes or wherever. So it was after about three or four years, I think, was it? Three or four years? Three years. Yeah, so it was only after three years that we actually moved into our own office. So in between that time, of course, it was myself, Inosh and Andrew, our co-founders, and our founding editor, Yutanje, who was featured, I think, in one of our previous episodes. So it was the four of us together, and we were going around, covering events, speaking to people, trying to tell people, hey, this is what Sri Lanka is doing with tech. This is what our guys are doing. They're doing good stuff. For a long time, it was just, you know, us writing about articles and then, of course, we delved into video and then podcasts so much more. And in between, of course, the team just expanded. Like, we had this guy joining in as... How are you joining in? I mean, you were a stalker. So five or six years back, uh, at the time, I was, I was technically... Well, I was technically... I was studying CMA at the time. So I was working at this place where I was a... Basically what I was doing, uh, I was into research reports, doing research reports on capital markets, you know, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, but at the same time, I've always had this thing for tech and that side, but I've never actually done anything on that. So, just back then when I started reading up on all these international tech maps, uh, I remember at the time thinking, you know, I wish there was something like that here in Sri Lanka. Funnily enough, I came across a video. This was about uh, Sri Lanka's first uh, electric supercar. The Vega? Yes, the Vega. Looking at the video, and I saw this you know, big ass white brand, white branding called Readme. Just checked up on the side, and to my surprise, there we have a proper running tech blog on, in Sri Lanka. And at first glance, I, I thought, you know, Way this could be up to internet that was my first impression. That was your first impression of us? Yeah, <laughs> this is before reading anything. Just the I thought okay, this is good. Then nice. again, fair enough, like our site looked crap back in the day. So But I started up reading about all these articles, then I did okay. I then I started having doubts, you know, okay, this is really Sri Lanka. But went to the team page, saw all the bloggers, including you. So next thing I next thing you know, I started there's no lack of a lack of a better word, stalking. So I stalk yep, every one of every one of them on LinkedIn, Facebook and whatnot. And I really bad, I badly wanted to get in. I had and this is coming from someone who had no experience in the tech industry, let alone writing. So back then I used to be part of this non profit organization whom I met a mutual friend who was actually you know working at Readme, just my life. I remember at the time I was battling him, all this battling, you know, are there vacancies, are there vacancies, you know, I want to get in. Because I didn't care what the vacancy was, I just wanted to get in. And then just for my luck, uh, there was this event, I can't remember the name of the event. I remember it happened at the EMI station. Yes, yeah. yes, this was on some HR conference. And I was asked whether I can do you know, live social media page. That was it. They just said yes. Went well, I met Tino and Andrew. And no contacts are afterwards. Five six months later, then Inosh actually reached out to me saying, you know, there are a few social media projects, I want you to take it up. Can you? Even at that time, I had no experience you know, doing these sort of projects. Mm -hmm. I just said, yes, I'm more than happy to. So that's how I first came in. And then, give it a few months later, then next thing you know, I started writing, and you know, it was 
Yep, I mean like that's almost similar to mine. I mean my entry into this world of tech was simply right during A levels. Yudanjay just dropped me a message on Facebook saying, "Hey, you know we're doing this thing called README. Would you like to join us?" Because at the time, of course, I used to know him a few about a year or two ago as well. Because we used to write together for this thing called the Gamer. So it's like that magazine slightly died down. So after that, of course, he messaged me on Read Me, and then that's how this whole thing started. It's just been a roller coaster. I mean, now we're over six years old now, and since then the company's grown leaps and bounds. I mean, it's not just Read Me anymore. So we've gone into sports with a platform called Daily Sports. There's education and travel we've recently got into. So the whole company's just transformed completely. We've gone from being in this tiny office in the KFC building in Gaygora to this. Pretty big place in the middle of Bangalore. That's pretty much the story of Read Me. So another experiment that we did a uh, while back was the Read Me magazine. So this is something we did in partnership with the Daily News. So it is a monthly magazine which collected all of our stories plus one really big cover story that we want to highlight individuals that did great things because we still do that on a monthly basis. But this was in the magazine format. So it was a magazine about what forty fifty pages. It wasn't as really part of that. I mean, but dude, uh, writing those editors' notes. I mean, like you said, we thought you know, fine. It's not gonna be that hard, you know. Space yeah, I mean, like we just thought, like you know what, just copy paste all the content from the side, put it there, done. Yeah. No. And that that doesn't even close to what we were. Yeah, like to do it. you remember how many times I wanted to kill the designer? I think we locked him inside the room once, right? Let's like, yeah. save this on video. Like, could I get arrested for this? It was a bigger challenge than we thought because, like, you can't just dump. But you took published online onto paper because paper has limitations. Because online you can write as much as you want, but paper there's just so much space. So it's like and hyperlinks don't work. <laughs> hyperlinks don't work. So it was like you have to chop stuff, and then you got to figure out okay if the hyperlink was to explain a certain concept, so that you can keep the article short online. Suddenly you got to figure out okay how do you explain that same concept in this limited space and. Just make sure people get the same message. Yeah, it was a constant series of all nighters, but it was a fun experiment we did. Can you talk more about like what you guys do personally? Personally, I do a lot of traveling. When I say traveling, I don't do that usual, you know, planning, and I tend to move to more towards like how do you say spontaneous, I guess. Uh, I remember I do this quite often, man. Surprisingly, you know, just been really cool with this. Yeah, I mean, like suddenly, like you'll find that this guy's like off the grid, and then later you'll see an Instagram story, just one story on the top of a mountain. Yeah, I've done this a couple of times. What do you mean, couple of times? You do this like every uh, every two three months, man. <laughs> That's not a couple of times. What about your side Oh, oh shit! I forgot about yeah. that. Okay, How do you forget about your cycle? You must like, dude. Forget that. Like, I mean, you <laughs> literally got into cycle because of a bus strike. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. I can't remember when exactly this is. I think about two years back. I guess there was this big scale bus strike, uh, train strike, dog strike. Basically, everybody was striking, and I'm a guy who commutes on the train every day. Not because I have to, because I want to be. Just because. It takes only half an hour for me to get to Colombo, whereas to go here, at least one and a half hours to where we were. I got off in Maradana, trying to get to Rajgir. There were no buses, there were no trucks, no taxis whatsoever. I thought, you know what? Screw this. I went to Bamba, uh, went to Lumala, got myself a mountain bike, started cycling. And then I started cycling to office. You were cycling what 18 kilometers? Yeah, yeah so I cycled 18 kilometers one day. So total that's about 34 kilometers per day. Surprisingly, I found cycling to be very liberating. I guess. Is it safe? Uh, not really. Yeah, safe. Uh, yes. So yes. I don't recommend anybody cycling on the main roads if you are not used to it. I shouldn't be saying this, but I don't actually have any safety gear. I I do have all these lights and all of that. It's perfectly yes. fine. Like where I come from, and Maldives, like nobody has safety gear, so they're they're fine. There are few times that I almost got knocked down by buses. Yeah, kids, please do not try this at home or anywhere on the streets. I have, I have so many cycle-related stories. Once I was heading towards this event at Shangri-La, I cycled all the way to Armour Street, and my cycle breaks down. Just for my luck, it was a cold day, and it was Sunday. No, there were no shops. Repair shops at any side, so 
I ended up walking from Amasri to Shangila. I got into this business because I always have liked storytelling actually. Like because as a kid, like I mean I grew up with a lot of video games like Metal Gear Solid, Ace Combat and all these I love the stories in them and I always wanted to tell these similar stories. As a child I wanted to be a game designer, but then you know I realized okay, it's it's actually a bit tough, like requires a lot of discipline to actually you know learn a lot of things. And that's originally actually what I started off when I went to get a computer science degree. And then of course after reading I realized you know there's more than one way to tell stories. So after that of course got in media and from here of course it's been like always wanting to tell stories in different ways. So besides of course stuff in reading of course I'm I guess I'm a wannabe public speaker. Like I'm an <laughs> <laughs> of course there's always those masters. So there of course I like of course going there like my, I always describe going to Toastmasters as I go for the fun but I stay because I learn a thing or two. Is, is that the ideas like that you're going on? Yeah, so from a personal standpoint, for me, I would actually want to travel, basically travel all around the world. But one thing I would want to do is, before actually looking at the world, first you travel in Sri Lanka, because being in a I think we are blessed to live in a country like Sri Lanka with so many places to see, so many things, so many experiences to get. I would want to actually cover as much of Sri Lanka as I possibly can before actually you know, thinking about you know, traveling all over the world. Because for me, I'm actually a, I actually have a US passport. Really? Yes. I'm, I'm not trying to boast here, but <laughs> which means I can easily travel. And people who know me uh, that I have a US passport will keep some, you know, Company, you know, why the lie is still here, you can just, you know. No, I mean, you have a lot of That's a good question. Why the lie is still here? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you just mentioned that. Like, I mean, he wants to see the rest of this country, man. Yeah, so, well, okay. To, okay, what was you living in the US? I wasn't, no, I wasn't living in the US. Uh, to be clear, I've never lived in the US. Okay. I was born there, I think I was there for a an year, and then my parents came here. Because at the time, my father was doing his uh, PhD there. Yeah. I was born, we came here, and then we went back. But on a serious note, uh, why, why I don't actually? I can do that right now. I can just go. But for me, you know, this is this is not the whole story, but this is one part, one part of it. So I'm someone who's been educated in the Sri Lankan education system. You know, There's a free education, right? I would actually want to at least give some sort of an economic output as much as I can while I'm here. Rather than you know, contributing to the brain drain, I don't say too much of a brain drain. <laughs> but anyhow, so rather than contribute to that, so for me, that's a personal choice. And plus, you know, I get to see so many awesome places here. It's not in every country that you get to travel, you know, go to the beach, and then the next day you can just go hiking on a mountain. That sort of environment, not everybody is gifted with that. From what I, what I believe is, you know, I see so many people complaining about so many different things, but they fail to see what we actually blessed with. Even my own mother asks you, why are you still here? Don't you want to go? I think both of us at this point, we are both dual citizens. Yeah, I mean, like you have the US passport for, like you were born with the Ukraine. Like, I don't know if I could say white privilege, but then again, I'm a bit of an Asian salad myself, right? I mean. I'm the Maldivian who was born in India, that was raised in Sri Lanka, that likes to eat Chinese food, listen to Korean music and watches Japanese TV. Yeah, I'm a complete Asian salad. <laughs> like, I don't know, like, clearly my parents were busy. For me, of course, I would say I am pretty much living something, I, what I would describe the ideal life. I mean, I like getting up and going to work every day. I like what I do. The only way I can see this improving is, you know, just simply our company scaling up, like read me just scaling up to all across Asia and beyond to the rest of the world because I like to travel as well but for me, I like to travel outside of Sri Lanka actually because I mean, I agree with you that this is, a, this is an amazing country, don't get me wrong, I mean I raised, I, was, I grew up here, I was raised here and I do of course like, that's why I'm still working here, I mean I want to give something back to this country as well because it's given me a lot, I agree with you that a lot, not everybody sees that 
this is a pretty good country. I mean, I would tell these people to spend at least a day in immigration. There's always like a yeah, surprising number exactly. of people. Like I've seen Chinese people like ang like last time I went there was an angry Chinese auntie screaming because her visa wasn't approved or something. There was an Indian guy who was furious that he was kept waiting for six hours. Then there was a very pretty Pakistani girl. And there was even an African teacher and a Norwegian teacher who was actually panicking because he was worried that he had overstayed his visa. There's a lot of people that want to stay in this country. Like, I mean, I think people should accept that there is good things here. I would see Sri Lanka as a home, but recently adopted this practice where it's once a year that I would get out because I like to see the world because for me, this was about two years back when I went back to Maldives where this, I hadn't gone for almost 10 years and that experience like this was a huge shock for me because I was so used to people speaking in the background like in Sinhala or Tamil or English and suddenly here people speak in Maldives I was like wait wait whoa, whoa. <laughs> like it was a proper shock so what even who can't speak Maldives yeah I was, I was I grew up here okay in my defense I was here since I was three years old yeah so it was that's why it's a huge shock okay I mean like hearing all that in the background but at the same time, it's like it lit a fire. Like I want to learn more and explore. So that's why for me, it's like I also, I also want to get paid to you know take holidays and travel across the world. <laughs> I would say that I am living the ideal life right now. I'm happy where I work. I'm like I get up happy, and the only way I can see it improving is just us taking it everywhere else. I'm guessing we're just wrapping things up. So before we do, we just want to say thank you to all the people you know who've been with us right from the beginning, starting off there's Yuda who was our founding editor who personally showed me the ropes of everything and Arshad who taught us everything we know about video and, and got me into reading <laughs> and brought Lakeru into reading me. Funny enough I, I actually I left this out so uh, Oh you now you remember this. Yes sir, I, now I, really want, this. I really wanted to mention this. Wow. So, uh, back when Arshad actually first called me about that particular event in EMICH. This is that you know, social media live update thing I was supposed to do. Because after the event only I got to know that uh, that particular event he called me for, he actually ended up calling the long the wrong live. He was supposed to call did another he call live. Did he call the singer? I don't know, we have both of the same. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he actually ended up calling the wrong live apparently. Uh, I like how that worked out in the end for me at least. Yeah, I'm good as Dorshad and then like I mean there's all this there's who was like our oh, operation managers, Tarika, Fioni. Yeah, there's so many people. Like I mean Tarika, Fioni, Sol, Inta, Inta, he's still with us. Yato is still with us, she managed to reach the like don't forget her. I mean <laughs> I know she's small and like you might miss her but she does miss her. She's still with us. Yeah, yeah. Part of the point, like, don't break my heart, don't break my heart. Uh, too much again. Actually. Yeah, so there's been a lot of people who've been with us, I mean, both within the team and beyond the team. So, all I can say is just thank you for supporting us and we hope you'll be with us in the future as well.